Redneck's father passed away in his sleep. In the morning, he calls 911 to come pick up the body. The 911 operator told him she would send someone over right away. And she said, where do you live? He says, at the end of Eucalyptus Drive. The operator says, can you spell that, please? And after a long silence, he came back on and he said, how about if I drag him over to Oak Street and you pick him up there? <laughs> Two crows were in a field when they noticed a figure that looked like a man in the distance. See that over there? What is that? said the first crow. Second, takes a long look. He says, that's a scarecrow. Looks authentic though, doesn't it? The first crow said, how can you tell it's a scarecrow, not a person? He says, look at his hand, there's no cell phone. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 12, 14 and 15 says, make every effort to live in peace with everyone and to be holy. Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. Verse 15, see to it that no one falls short of the grace of God and that no bitter root grows up to cause trouble and defile many. Would you bow your heads with me? Lord, I praise and thank you that you have entrusted these words to your servant to bring to the family in the house today. And I pray that you will direct these words to go into hungry hearts and that you will cause them to have the effect that you want the words to have in Jesus' name. Amen. Talking about bitterness today. Bitterness is a symbol of affliction, misery, and servitude. Exodus 1, 14, verse 120, and Jeremiah 9, 15. I'm not going to read all those, but the Chaldeans are called bitter and hasty nation. Bitter. Uh, the gall of bitterness expresses a state of great wickedness in Acts 8 and 30 and 23. A root of bitterness is a wicked person or a dangerous sin in Hebrews chapter 12 and 15, which was our text today. Talking about bitterness, I was talking to a, a friend of ours who was a Christian um, psychologist. She has a counseling business, that's what she does. I wanted to make sure that I was accurate if I said this. So I said, can I say that bitterness is the result of unresolved negative emotions. And she said, absolutely, that's precisely what it is. She deals with a lot of people that have bitterness. And uh, matter of fact, she said, a lot of them came down with cancer, whether that's a related factor. I know that, I know that stress can affect your body, so why not bitterness? And she's suggesting that. Well, we all have hurts, disappointments, anger, grief. And if there's somebody in here that says they never had any of those, you're lying in God's house, <laughs> if you said. Because we all have that. Even children have that. But if the unresolved negative emotion festers in one's spirit, it produces bitterness. That's pretty much how she described it. I spent some time in the wee hours on Friday morning. I wake up in the middle of the night, 3, 30, 4 o'clock, and think about these things. And I was trying to think back in my life to see if I could remember a time of being bitter. I could not. I couldn't remember a time of being bitter. I was able to remember hurts, disappointments, anger, but I couldn't remember bitterness. I thought long and hard about my early childhood, middle years, teen years, married years. I could not remember a time of bitterness. Bitterness happens when a person dwells on negative emotions, allowing them to fester until they're out of control. You know, I've seen people hurt by a church that should never happen, but it does. Some people are hurt by betrayal of a trusted friend. We all have hurts, we all have disappointments, we all have times of anger, but it's what you do with that 
that might result in a bitter root. When I was a senior in high school, I had a girl that I was interested in. I dated her through senior high school. And um, she, would, she wasn't interested in being exclusive. She wouldn't be my, my girlfriend but because she wanted to be free just to date other people. But I didn't date anybody else. I just wanted with her, you know what I mean? And after graduation, I went on a fishing trip up in, up in Potter County for a week. And when I came back, I called her up, made a date. We went to the movies and, and, and there's a, which was right around a corner from her house really. And then a couple of blocks over there's YMCA and they always had Friday night uh, teenage dances in there. So we went to the movie and we walked over there and outside of the dance she said, she said, leave me, don't come in here with me, just leave. Well, I didn't do that, I just went in there and as soon as we went in the door, she walked right up to this other guy and she was with him all night. So that was the end of that. Well, I could have let that fester because it hurt because she shouldn't have accepted a date if she was gonna do that, you know what I mean? It was crude. But anyway, so I thought to myself, I'm not gonna take this laying down, I'm gonna call somebody else up. And I called up Carol. <laughs> we had a mutual friend, Jim, Jim was his name, and I said, Wait, what's Carol doing? He said, she's seeing anybody? I don't think so. So I called her up and the rest is history. <laughs> it didn't hurt shit. She was the most beautiful girl in the whole senior class, which she was. And I don't know why she had anything to do with me. Because I was pretty much just a, I didn't, I wasn't athletic. I wasn't smart. I wasn't anything. But she fell in love with me anyway. <laughs> So that a girl, she did me a wonderful favor. I'm grateful for that favor. We were 20 years old when we got married. We were 17 when that happened. And uh, when we were 25, we became parents and we also became children of God. Life has been good. But I could have allowed that to fester and become bitter. It's when you allow hurts to, to dwell in you and, and just hang on to them. I just dismissed it and she was, the, she was the blessing that came along. Follow peace, it says in our verse. It says, follow peace. Living in peace with everyone means even those who cause us grief of some kind. Can you practice that? those who harm us in some way, everyone, follow peace. Living in peace means even those that cause us grief. Sometimes that's not easy, but it needs to be done. I can't push the amen button because of my finger. <laughs> so if I leave a pause, that's your chance to say amen. Then it says, follow holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. Living in peace, is part of holiness. Because if you're not in peace, then you're not operating in holiness. We're required to be holy. Without it, no one will see God. But of course, we can't really be completely holy. But we are to be pursuing holiness. That's what sanctification is, a process of getting more hanging on to God, closer to God, and less of a hold on the world and that's pursuing holiness or called sanctification. Then it says, see to it that lest any man fall short of God's grace, lest any root of bitterness springs up to trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. Bitterness spills over onto other people. That's also a comment that my counselor friend made. She said that, that bitterness spills over onto other people and causes negative emotions in them. So the germination, what, what is it that causes the root of bitterness? You know, a seed has to germinate and then 
There's a thing called heliotropism and a thing called geotropism. Geotropism means the root part of that seed goes down, even if you plant the seed upside down. And the stem part goes up, heliotrope goes toward light. And I only know that because I was an ag major at Penn State. That's the only thing I can remember from my entire, uh, <laughs> from my entire career at Penn State. So the seed of bitterness is a heart that is planted in someone, a hurt, not a heart, a hurt, that is planted in someone. Maybe intentional or maybe unintentional, someone does not mean to hurt you, but you were hurt. Sometimes the hurt is only imagined, no one has hurt you, but somehow you feel that someone has done something wrong to you. Have you ever been there? Don't answer that, but you probably have. There are also times when the hurt may be the very chastisement of God on your life. That's the context of Hebrews 12, 14, and 15. The soil of bitterness, if you have a root, there has to be a soil. The, root of, the soil of bitterness is a heart that harbors hostility and does not deal with with hurt. When someone becomes bitter, the bitterness takes root and the heart and the hurt in the heart and the and it grows deeper. The world is full of people who have not dealt with an old hurt. They look for things to criticize. People find fault with and ways to justify the way they feel. I'm sure you've come across people like that. You know, sometimes you can tell a bitter person just by their body language or the look on their face. You can tell them. And I've dealt with a lot of people. I probably photographed 50,000 seniors. 50,000. Shawnee was just one of them. <laughs> 50,000. I just, I'm just guesstimating that. But... And a lot of them, you could tell there's something under the surface that's, that's going on there. I talked to all of them. And you, could, you could just tell with people that there's something that seems like it's dragging them down. And there's a hurt there. There's a bitterness there. Some people are, some people are, some people are bitter because of family things that are happening that shouldn't happen. Terrible things that kids go through that shouldn't have to go through you know I, I remember I remember knowing kids whose parents were in jail were in prison and I remember kids whose parents ought to be in prison shame kids have to go through that but it causes bitterness I, I know a coach this was the coach of the girls basketball team in Hollidaysburg and I was saying something to him one time uh I don't remember what the conversation was about, but he told me that he was not on speaking terms with God since his wife died. And then his daughter took over as coach of that, of that basketball team and on a separate occasion said the same thing to me. I haven't been on speaking terms with God since my mother died. And she didn't hear him saying that to me. This was a couple years later. It's the same sentiment. They were bitter towards God. Job could have been bitter towards God, but he wouldn't do that. Have you ever seen people who are hypercritical? They criticize everything. Generally, they're bitter people. They know how to push your buttons until you, you react in a way to further justify their bitterness. And then they can say, aha, I was right. I have a right to be bitter. <laughs> the fruit of bitterness, what does it affect? Well, we have learned about the seed and the soil of bitterness, but the root and the fruit of bitterness and that's text, also text in, in, it's found in our text of Hebrews 12, 14 and 15. The root of bitterness is, is underground. The root is underground. The root of bitterness is underground. It's easy to hide it and camouflage it 
Not the bitterness itself, but the root of it. Seldom do you find anyone who will admit that they're a bitter person. Did you, did you ever have somebody walk up to you and say, I'm bitter? <laughs> They'll say, I'm sad or I'm disappointed. But nobody comes up to you and says, I'm bitter. Unless you happen to be a therapist, maybe. They will either deny it or disguise it. A bitter person is hypersensitive, ungrateful, insincere, holds grudges, and has mood swings. Bitterness will affect you physically, emotionally, and spiritually because the fruit of bitterness is an acid that destroys its container. When your heart is bitter, God will not be real to you. When your heart is bitter, hatefulness and holiness do not dwell in the same heart. Hatefulness and holiness will not dwell in the same heart, the same spirit. And without holiness, you will not see the Lord. So there are three steps in eradicating bitterness. One is let God reveal it. Sometimes people say, I know my heart, there's no bitterness in me. The truth of the matter is you don't know your heart. God's word tells us the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked who can know it. <laughs> a deceitful heart cannot diagnose a deceitful heart. <laughs> you need to let God's Holy Spirit do the diagnosis. I left a pause right there. <laughs> I just can't operate this thing. A response of bitterness is never right when someone has done something wrong to you. Let me read it again. A response of bitterness is never right when someone has done something wrong to you. You need to ask God to forgive you, and he will by his grace. If someone has wronged you, Cut it down and forget it. By the grace of God, bury that heart in the grave of God's forgetfulness. Justice is God giving us what we deserve. Mercy is God not giving us what we deserve. And grace is God giving us what we don't deserve. And the third one is let good replace it. It says in our text, follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. You cannot be holy unless you follow peace with men. It's so freeing when you forgive. But you say, look what they've done. I'm not going to let them off the hook. Well, they're not on the hook. You are. <laughs> when you forgive, you set two people free and one of them is yourself. Life is more joyful when you uproot your bitterness. If God gives us, gave us justice, every person reading this, that's me, I'm reading it, <laughs> would die and go to hell. Let me read that again because life is more joyful when you uproot your bitterness. If God gave us justice, Every person hearing this would die and go to hell. If God gave us what we deserve, in other words. Yes. Thank God for his mercy that removes his hand of punishment from us. Praise God for his grace that gives us a brand new life. Amen. So why is bitterness a sin? Ephesians 4, 31 and 32 where it says, get rid of all bitterness, rage and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. Get rid. A list of things that are sinful in one of them. The first one is bitterness. God's word warns us that bitterness is a sin. When you're bitter, you make a statement about God's inability to care for you. Bitterness not only hurts you, it affects the people around you. When you're bitter, you blame others for things that happen to you. You focus on the negative things. 
you become critical, you criticize. You can't see the good in people or situations and you become cynical. Bitterness is anger gone bad. Your unresolved bitterness is like a poison inside your heart and mind. This sin prevents you from worshiping God and loving others. So 1 Ephesians 4.31 says, Get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling, and slander, along with every form of malice. In our text today in Hebrews says, See to it that no one comes short of the grace of God and that no root of bitterness springing up causes trouble, and by it many become defiled. So what in the Bible, what does the Bible say to us about what causes bitterness? Bitterness is often associated with suffering. Perhaps you struggle with a long-term illness or lost a spouse or a child in a terrible accident. These situations are heartbreaking and you may feel, may feel angry and disappointed. Those are normal feelings. But if you allow your anger to fester or your disappointment to fester, it will spiral down into bitterness toward God or toward the people around you. Bitterness gives you a hard heart. It binds you, it blinds you to God's grace. You may begin to believe wrong things about God, about scripture and about other people such as, well, God isn't loving. This happened to me and where was God? He's not loving. He doesn't hear my prayers. This happened to me. He doesn't hear my prayers. He won't punish the wrongdoers who hurt the person I love. He doesn't care about me, my life, or my situation. These are thoughts that might invade your spirit. No one understands me or what I'm going through. They would feel like me if they went through what I've been through. Those are feelings and thoughts that invade your spirit and cause, or that's the result of bitterness too. For the moment, all disciples, all, dis all discipline seems painful rather than pleasant. But later it yields a peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. So we see to it that no one fails to obtain the grace of God and that no root of bitterness springs up and causes trouble and by it many become defiled. See, people don't keep bitterness just to themselves. They share it, and other people become defiled. The difficulty that you're experiencing doesn't mean God is punishing you, but that he loves you. Jesus took your punishment when he died on the cross for your sins. Suffering makes you stronger. Depends on what you do with it. It's for your good and helps you grow in holiness and trusting in God. If bitterness clouds your view of God, you miss God's grace in your suffering. It's difficult to see the goodness of God through the haze of bitterness. God knows how you feel. You're not alone. I encourage you to not just sit in the pain when there's something eating at you. Pray for help with your bitterness, with your unforgiveness, or even jealousy if you have to. Seek the Lord and rest in Him. Philippians 4, 7, and the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So in the Bible, the consequences of bitterness even secular counselors acknowledge the negative consequences of bitterness in a person's life. They say that bitterness has side effects similar to trauma. Consequences of bitterness include insomnia, extreme fatigue, getting sick a lot, lack of libido, negativity, low self-confidence, loss of healthy relationships that's what my therapist friend told me there's so many things that she has to deal with of the effects of bitterness until they get down into the heart of it 
and deal with where it came from. And she's able to turn some of them around. So what's the cure? When you're bitter, you think about other people's sins against you. You aren't thinking about your sins against other people. The cure for breaking free from bitterness is forgiveness. First ask God to forgive you and then forgive others for their sin against you. Mutual forgiveness. And why worry about a speck in your friend's eye when you have a log in your own? <laughs> How can you think of saying, let me help you get rid of that speck in your eye when you can't see past the log in your own eye? That's hypocrisy. First get rid of the log from your own eye, then perhaps you will see well enough to deal with the speck in your friend's eye. Matthew, that's Matthew 7, 3 to 5. So we need to choose forgiveness over bitterness. When you're bitter, you choose to hold on to unforgiveness. A deep hurt inflicts pain. It's tempting not to want to forgive the one who hurt you, who caused this negative emotion that comes, that comes to bitterness. But scripture teaches us we can forgive others because God has forgiven us so much. It's not easy to forgive someone who's hurt you, but if you ask him, God can give you the strength to do it. Corey Ten Boom tells a great story about forgiving those who hurt you. Anybody, anybody does not know who Corey Ten Boom is? You all know who she is, it's who she was. She was thrown into prison and later into a concentration camp because she helped hide Jews during Hitler's occupation of Holland. While Corey was in the Ravensbrück concentration camp, she suffered beatings and other inhumane treatments at the hand of the ends of the guards. And after the war, she traveled worldwide telling of God's grace and help for her during her imprisonment. She told the story about how a man approached her one evening after she'd shared. He told her that he'd been a guard at Ravensbrook. He explains how he had become a Christian and experienced God's forgiveness for his terrible actions. Then he extended his hand and asked her to please forgive him. In her book, The Hiding Place, which came out in 1972, Carrie explains, Corey explains what happened. And I stood there, whose sins I had every, every day to be forgiven and could not. Bestie had died in that place could he erase her slow, terrible, terrible death simply for the asking? It could not have been many seconds that he stood there, hand out, but to me it seemed hours as I wrestled with the most difficult thing I, I had ever had to do. For I had to do it. I knew that. The message that God forgives has a prior condition that we forgive those who have injured us. If you do not forgive men their trespasses, Jesus says, neither will your Father in heaven forgive your trespasses. And still I looked, still I stood there with the coldness clutching my heart. But forgiveness is not an emotion. I knew that too. Forgiveness is an act of the will. And the will can function regardless of the temperature of the heart. Jesus, help me, I prayed silently. I can lift my hand, I can do that much. You supply the feeling. And so woodenly, mechanically, I thrust my hand into the one stretched out to me. And as I did, an incredible thing took place. The current started in my shoulder, raced down my arm, sprang into our joined hands, and then this healing warmth seemed to flood my whole being, bringing tears to my eyes. I forgive you, brother, I cried with all my heart. Only God can give you the strength to forgive others. 
God's forgiveness for you is the motivation and his grace empowers you to forgive others. When you extend the same forgiveness that God's given you, your bitterness will fade away. It takes time and prayer to extend forgiveness, but keep your eyes on God and he'll help you forgive if that's what you need to do. James 4, 7, submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil and he will flee from you. In Colossians 3, 13, bearing with one another and bearing with one another and if one has a complaint against another forgiving each other as the Lord has forgiven you so also you must forgive the Lord's forgiveness earns us a place in heaven that we don't deserve our forgiving someone else just releases a bitterness whoever Proverbs 17 9 whoever would foster love covers over an offense but whoever repeats the matter separates close friends so we're all susceptible to bitterness whether someone grievously sins against you or you feel angry that you've got overlooked for promotion at work bitterness can creep into without you realizing it it's like a position that alters your view of life of God and of others. Bitterness leads to a physical and relational problems. God wants you to be free from bitterness. Remembering his forgiveness will motivate you to forgive others. If you ask him, God gives you the strength to forgive and break the power of bitterness in your life. Bitterness has always been a part of human emotion. Cain was bitter with Abel. Bitterness is a negative emotion. Christians must rise above it. Whatever is a hurt, instead of burying it deep in your spirit, just rise above it and let it go. Is that easy? With practice. With practice it is. Philippians 4, 7, and 8, and the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. See, we're supposed to focus our thoughts and our spirit on good things not on negative hurtful things but on the goodness of God and you can always find some good in any person there's always some good there there is Christian believers are able to direct their thoughts you can direct your thoughts so direct your thoughts toward God and his goodness instead of things that hurt that's the conclusion of the matter. Don't dwell on hurtful things. Dwell on the goodness of God. Amen? Amen. Would you stand? It's 12.04. The Baptists are already at the restaurant, so there's no hurry now. <laughs> Just kidding. I shouldn't pick on our Baptist brothers and sisters. They're good people. Father God, we came into your presence and I trust these words have been a blessing to someone under my voice today, Lord. And Lord, help us with these things. Help us to dismiss negative hurts and thoughts instead of allowing them to fester into bitterness, Lord. We love you today, Lord. You're awesome. You are our God. We worship you. You're so awesome and forgiving to us. Help us to be that way to other people. Be with us all as we, until we come back next time we meet. In Jesus' name, amen. Bible study at 6 o'clock downstairs.